Uber Boss Viable, Tier 17 Viable, and with more investment, even Valdo Maps Viable. And yet, somehow, this build ended up being a bit of a leak starting bait to me. We'll talk about that, but first and foremost, welcome back, everybody. The name is Wolf, and today I'll be sharing with you my Splitting Steel Trickster. As always, if you want to skip to the good parts, by all means, there are time codes in the description box below to help you with that. And while you're down there, make sure to hit that like button, as I would very much appreciate that. So let's talk a little bit about the strengths and the weaknesses. In the background, you can see some Uber bosses being killed. We have Uber Eater right here, Exarch afterwards. And that kind of shows you the actual power of the build. It is designed to kill bosses efficiently and comfortably because we cannot only tear them down very quickly with our high damage, but also everything they might throw at us, or at least 99% of it, can be ignored because it won't ever kill us. And the reality of that is that it's actually only going to become better with more investment. That is a terrifying conclusion, but the truth nonetheless. Because this is pre-melding. It is pre-adorned. If we had melding and adorned, we would be even tankier, and we would have even more damage. I'm still missing an aura as a result too, which is even more tank or more damage, depending on which one you, uh, you end up using, right? So if you want to go for those Daldo maps, you definitely can. You will be able to tank the world and not break a single sweat. However, I am not brave enough to try to avoid my character on a Valdo map. And yet I'm already doing this to uber bosses. So I don't really feel the need to go further beyond because I can already do everything I set out to do, including tier 17 maps and doing tier 17 boss rushes as well, which was very lucrative for a while. So yes, this boss character or this boss slaying character can pretty much do anything you would want in terms of single target bossing. However, what is the weakness? Well, that's of course the mapping. The mapping is a little lackluster. It has an like adequate of course, mapping due to its high speed with attack speed and rolling blade or shield rush or leap slam, shield charge, sorry, or leap slam if that's what you end up using. But the actual distance of the splitting steel is not all that great. You can fix this, however, with an awakened fork. If you have a white socket, you can just switch those out really quickly. But I know that gem swapping can be annoying to people. It is annoying to me. Or using an Arias end flask for some explosions, which does help. But I feel like it could definitely feel better still. So if you want to look for like a character that's like super good at mapping, this is not it. If you want to have a character that is super good at destroying uber bosses and is ready to do Valdo maps once you have enough investment, then this is that character. So how does a build that can tank the world actually become bait? Well, it's not a bait build first and foremost, right? It is a bait leak starter. The build itself is phenomenal. It is powerful. It is quick. It can take on all content. So what more do you need? It is, however, not a leak starter. This build requires too much to feel good. Specifically, Nimus for damage and Mage Blood for everything else. If you have those two, you can play the build and feel comfortable about it. But until then, you are basically playing a version of the build where you're constantly trying to apply band-aids and duct tape to gaping wounds that will not heal by themselves. It is a trying and painful experience. The only way you can comfortably leak start this build from scratch is arguably if you have, a, or a, I don't know, an aura bot with you 24-7 that nobody told me about or was even mentioned in any possible video guide, which was mildly infuriating. If I had known the thing that I know now, I would have never League started this build. I think that this build is incredible, but as a League starter, absolutely not. There's too many issues with it. I would have preferred to have League started as a different build, farmed up the Mage Blood, farmed up the Nimbus, and then switched to it. I think that would have been easier, faster, and more efficient. Because the struggle bus trying to get into red maps and then trying to farm red maps, especially in a League where everything is more difficult due to these additional modifiers and all mobs in maps very very painful then again on the flip side we are playing path of exile so i imagine our pain tolerance is quite high to begin with having that said though we are about to finish up the uber cortex right here as you can see i am simply taking everything to the face without being phased if you will but yes we're going to go into the talent tree the gear the gems kind of show you what I've decided ultimately on to run with and ultimately if you also want to copy that by all means if you want to switch it I encourage you to do so other than that 
I hope you will enjoy this little build showcase slash pseudo guide. But otherwise, um, yes, incredible build. Just do not leak start it unless you have a permanent aura bot with you. <laughs> I think that's the too long didn't read version. So let us get into the nitty gritty of the character as we appreciate the sexy Draugr MTX. But yes, this is my character, the Wolf Who Cried Boy 98 right now. And as it stands for the gear, we have an Ephemeral Edge, Resolute Technique, Max Energy Shield. Uh, I sniped this early, otherwise I'd probably be running a regular one with a max leveled precision, as we have plenty of mana to roll that, and maybe have a Watcher's Eye that has some good attack speed or attack damage rolls on it with precision active. We also have a Hubris Circlet. This was a pain to craft, but as you can see, triple tier 1's fractures with a tier 1 energy shield percentage as well as an increased energy shield recharge which helps offset wicket which is very comfortable i would have preferred maybe an essence craft here i might recraft this for mana reservation if i'm planning to use a different aura or an additional aura i should say but for now this is perfectly fine finishing it off with a focus craft so i can cast all my curses with a single wonderful button um, without having to use Arcanist Brand. Super comfortable, no cast speed needed, very comfy. We also have an Aziri's Reflection, pretty high rolled, 19%, good intellect, max all res, very, very good. Love the fact that we are unaffected by curses, so comfortable. On top of that, we of course have Nimus, speaks for itself, mandatory for good damage. We have the Anathema, which allows us to get not three, but four total curses going. The three curses in our helmet, as well as our Mark. We have the Voice of the Storm. There is a better uh, amulet for this, like one of the new ones, if it's a high-rolled one, which would be super insane. There's also an argument to be made if I want to go full in Stecker to go with like a hyper... I forgot the base, but the one that increases your suffixes massively that can be used tremendously well for an in Stecker. But under that, Voice of the Storm, very, very good. The... Lightning damage with non-critical strikes is lucky. is so very good. Uh, we have a triple tier 1 prefix fracture sorcerer gloves right here with attack speed from the essence until we have intelligence. And then we added the attack speed for focus because we are focusing quite often. So this is just like wonderful attack speed on bosses and difficult rares. Very, very good. We, of course, have the mage blood, obviously. And then, of course, we have a Sorcerer Boot, also Triple Fracture with Intellect, Tier 1 Movement Speed, uh, the Elemental Avoidance from the Essence with an All Attribute Craft, just to help us get enough strength to be able to run all the Red Gems at 21, which is exactly what we need, 159, but also a little bit more Intellect, because we are trying to stay above 1,000 Intellect as a result of the Implicits right here with 1% less damage taken per 200 Intelligence, right? I also need to improve the Implicit right here for 4% increased damage, at least, per 100 Intelligence, but that's okay. You might say, why are you not running Mark Effect? Because I already have 100% Mark Effect from the tree, um, so I don't need it. I, I could just run the damage mod right here. But yeah, if you don't run Intellect-based mods, you want to run Melding with Lightning, Max Res, and of course Mark Effect here to save some spots on the tree. And maybe get spell suppressed that way without having to use a watcher's eye. In terms of the flasks, we have bottled faith, just a sulfur flask, increased damage taken, just very, very good. You can switch this out for a taste of hate if you want to have more physical defense. You can also switch this out for an Orias End if you want to have better clear. But otherwise, bottled faith is just very, very good, especially on tier 17 maps or mandatory even on bosses for max results, right? We have a silver flask, max rolled with attack speed. We have a Topaz Flask with Avoid Being Stunned, which allows us to become stun immune. Now we're using a Sapphire as well, because we're pre-melding. So we are using the Triple Element Flask setup uh, with movement speed, very comfy. And then of course also more evasion, because we are evasion based. So a Ruby for that as well. If we were running melding, I'd probably be running a Quartz Flask for the Spell Suppress, so I can use a different Watcher's Eye and maybe... I don't know, something else. Maybe you want a, a, a Bismuth Flask for more resistances, because I would have to solve resistances somehow. But yes, that seems like a pretty good setup. So let's move to the gems, right? In our weapon, we have Cast When Damage Taken with Immortal Coal, which is very, very comfortable. It goes off constantly and protects us continuously. Very, very good. 
and we have an ancestral protector just for those preemptive boss setups getting more attack speed is very very good for this build on our helm we have leap slam as our mode of transversal we have moved away from frost blink shield charge because we needed the socket pressure to be relieved and leap slam allows us to move through everything we need to so that was the correct way of doing it i think conductivity punishment and elemental weakness we are not self-casting this of course we are casting this with the triggered socket spells when you focus in the in the helm craft itself just a reminder of that in the wonderful mark on his setup on the shield we have also sniper's mark and a enhance just for more damage very very comfortable you could drop this if you want to get something else but i like the sniper's mark and the mark on hit level 2120 is mandatory for my setup because i needed one more percent to get a hundred percent curse effect and the curse for sniper's mark works in 50 percent intervals so to get a hundred percent extra I needed one more percent, so I needed to get a 2120 or a max roll on my shield, but I opted for the gem. It, thought it was easier. Um, in the six link, we have damage on full life support on a white socket. We can switch this with Awakened Fork for mapping if we wanted to. We also have Awakened Lightning Pen for the lightning exposure. Energy Leech. We have the Splitting Steel. No quality required because Impales don't do anything for us. We have Volatility Support, which is very, very good if you have Lucky tacked in very comfortable and of course also awakened elemental damage with attack because then we not only get a bunch of damage but we are also immune from elemental reflect with our primary skill which is very very good in our gloves we have haste grace enlightened support four and discipline i would have preferred maybe to tech in another banner um dread banner to maybe debuff enemies otherwise the defiance banner for more evasion i could also maybe get the recrafts going for mana reservation and maybe start looking at an arctic armor or if i really want to get fancy maybe get a wrath in could be cool a lot of work though and in our boots we have smite for the ex occasional extra damage buff against the tough mobs increased duration for comfort we can also get rid of this and put the banner in if we wanted to but i just don't never i don't really die against uber bosses so why would i and then also we have call to arms which is the automated uh, war cry support and we are using enduring cry for the endurance charges and the occasional resistance buff you can also use i believe it is intimidating cry for intimidation and more damage that way if that's what you want you could totally do that so let us talk about the skill tree right here obviously we are tricksters we are picking up polymath we are picking up one step ahead escape artist as a travel note and then we are picking up spellbreaker because the flame flesh jewel for soul drinker was cheaper but you do want both, so kind of mix and match which one you can buy and afford, and then just don't spec that one, tech that one in through the Flame Flesh, and inspect the other ones that you want. That's what I did. We're going to the top right here, as you can see. The reason for that is simply the Parandus Pact is absolutely cracked with this build. So we're picking up a lot of these value nodes right here, which are going to be buffed with 3% increased maximum energy shield. We're also picking up resourcefulness because we need it to cap our spell suppress, but it's just incredible value. 8% spell suppress, 10% increased max energy shield, plus another 3 from the Parandus Pact. It's a value note. Why not, right? We're picking up Soul Thief with a wonderful mastery. We are pseudo instackers, so getting evasion rating per intelligence is very, very valuable. We are evasion based as well with the energy shield, so Ghost Dance is a no brainer. We do pick up Mind Drinker, giving us access to Mana Mastery for increased Mana Reservation. Very, very important. We are picking up Arcing Blows as well, because it's just like value notes for penetration and damage. A little bit of conversion goes a long way. Uh, this allows you also to kind of inoculate yourself against physical reflect. You don't need 100% like some people have been saying. I've been running juiced physical reflect maps. And as long as I don't leap slam into some weird pack i typically am fine in fact i can leave slam into most packs and be absolutely fine it's the um it's the elemental reflect that you have to worry about but then we have a gem for that in our primary skill right other than that we also pick up written in blood and because we are stacking energy shield on our helm quite efficiently and quite effectively we buff that up for a tremendous amount more very very good we also have influence because auras we do have Chaos Inoculation, incredibly good. We do pick up Wicked Ward, 
Wicked Ward is something you want to pick up once you have Spellbreaker. Without Spellbreaker, Wicked Ward is not worth it. Um, but yeah, we have Anointed Arcane Focus because Pseudo Intellect Stacker, but also 20% increased maximum energy shield. Yes, very good. In stacking, speaks for itself. More intellect, more intellect. We do have a cluster right here, very lovely cluster. All attributes. Field of Fight, Martial Prowess, Veteran Defender. Veteran Defender helps you get all your res and all your attributes that you need to run um, with a nice buff for defenses on equipped shield. We're also picking up Field of Fight. This is the budget version. You want to have the other version of this, which I think is Feed the Fury, which gives you more attack speed and more damage while leeching than this does. Don't quote me on that. I'm taking it off the dome right now. And we also have a single medium cluster right here that I happen to luckily roll into with high intelligence, eye to eye, repeater, 3% all rest, which is not really very important. I would have preferred all attributes, but it is what it is. You can't always get what you want. Moving down, though, from this little split right here, we have our parentheses back. I already mentioned that we are picking up infused, not because we need the power charge or the 3% energy shield. It allows us to get, of course, the extra point of curse or the extra curse count for anathema right because we are running four curses the three in our helms conductivity punishment and elemental weakness as well as the sniper's mark if you want to drop a curse you don't need this point you can do that if you want some people have i am picking up clever thief just for more value on the energy shield but also leech for life and mana mana more specifically as well as more mana per hit very important this allows us to keep our mana topped off since we can't reduce our mana cost to zero because they removed the flask uh, craft on that we also have 10 percent leeches instant which is very important because we are also leeching energy shield right very very good we are still picking up damage against mark's enemies with mark to prey i might take this out and maybe tech in a cluster another cluster or maybe move to some other points but so far it's been pretty good as you can see we're also seeing some tattoos i have two blind tattoos just because it helps with evasion. And the rest of the travel tattoos are pretty much 4% increased effect. You need 4 to counteract the penalty on your gem. On mark on, not mark on hit? Yes, mark on hit, because it's like 15% reduced at level 2120. At 2020, it's 16% reduced. So you need 4 of them to be able to even that out. And then we have even more all the way on every single dex note, combined with some other points to get a 100% increased curse effect on our mark, right? Having that said, let's go down here. We have a Ancestral Vision with Spell Suppress and our Boots Craft. This allows us to become Elemental Ailment Immune. Very, very comfy. We have, of course, Charisma with some increased effect of uh, Auras. You can also go for more damage with increased damage on each of your Aura affecting you. I think that's going to be one of my next points, maybe up here. Once I'm 99, who knows? We are picking up Inveterate and the entire wheel with increased spell uh, suppression. Every unique mastery is worth it because of polymath. 3% more damage. Very, very good. On top of that, we also have a Thread of Hope, a reasonable Thread of Hope, which allows us to pick up Wind Dancer, which is nice. Multi-shot, extra projectile. Very, very good. Also, two points for piercing. I might remove this one if I put another cluster. And also, we have just a value point here with Primeval Force. Just a lot of increased elemental damage. Very, very comfy. As we travel down, we pick up Expert Hunter, which allows us to get a lot of increased effect of marks, which helps us get to that 100% extra. Mark Mastery to get Frenzy Charges. Very, very good. By the way, once again, if you want to check your actual charges, you can do so here. And your Sniper's Mark, Miscellaneous, plus 100%. Very comfy. Then we have Precise Technique. I'm running this because I do have that Resolute Technique. This is pretty much what you want to do with Resolute Technique. Prior to Resolute Technique, you may want to cons uh, consider um, staying on this other side right here, which allows you to pick up Elemental Overload. Although we only have one max health, so you can always pick this up if you want to go down here anyway, because of the fact that your accuracy is always going to be higher than your maximum life because of Chaos Inoculation, right? So Precise Technique is just always going to be up. It's always going to be good. It's always going to be the better option than compared to Elemental Overload, in my opinion. So I went down here very quickly once I picked up the uh, Ephemeral Edge with the Resolute Technique early in the league. We are picking up a Wisdom of the Glade. 
because I want to be above a thousand intellect because of my chest piece implicit. If I have more than a thousand thirty, I could unspec this and get a point back. But having that said, though, we have another large cluster right here. Fuel the fight, veteran defender, very budget. We have a watcher's eye. I'm just having this for spell suppress. I'm looking for a better one, maybe energy shield on hit or otherwise phasing. And I have a very, very bad jewel right here for corrupt blood immunity. I still have to find a better version. I'm trying to look for like a three mod version, but people have been not willing to sell them. But I just want to be corrupted blood immunity because I had some like terrible experiences with it. Despite the fact that this build is very good in its recovery, if you get corrupted blood and there's nothing to recover on, you're going to feel it, and I hate it. I'd rather just be immune, right? I'd rather just get it over with. So I'm running that. Since I'm not running Adorned, I had an extra slot, so why not, right? I'm planning to upgrade that very, very soon. But that's kind of my Atlas tree uh, as it stands. So thank you all so much for, uh, for watching. Hopefully this inspired you. Make sure to never leak start this build unless you have a permanent aura bot with you. And um, yeah, we'll see what happens next league. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Leave a comment below. Hit that like button and all that YouTuber stuff that people do. And I will see you guys next time. Have a good night. Take care. And I'm out.